Hey, I just finished cleaning my IKEA greenhouse cabinets. So what better time to do a bit of a tour? So I will show you around, show you how I have them set up and hopefully you can enjoy. So I have my greenhouse cabinets set up in my living room. There are south facing windows in front of them. Uh, the cabinets are only, at least the one is only partially in front of the window. So depending on the shelf, they do get natural light, but I do have grow lights in there. I've kind of been debating whether I should take and put them in a different room like against a wall or something but I haven't really decided. Let's just say hello to Decker. Hello Decker. Are you enjoying the sunshine? Yeah you're a good boy aren't you? Everyone competes for the spots with the good light. Anyways let's start with this cabinet. This was the first one that I got. These are the Millsbo cabinets, I think. So I used to have three shell, or sorry, four shelves in this cabinet, which is the default of what it came with. But I found that my Hoyas, you can kind of see how tall they're getting. Uh, I, I feel like it's just good for them to have more room as they're growing. I haven't done too many modifications to these cabinets. I'm still using the base shell river are you causing trouble are you causing trouble what are you doing what are you doing come here no ipads for you there you go um i haven't done very many modifications i know some people replace these glass shells with acrylic shells with like slots which i think is nice but these cabinets cost enough as it is i didn't really want to spend extra money um i'll just kind of show you how i have it set up in the modifications that I have made. So one of the things I did do was drill a hole through the floor. Like this base is like two pieces of metal, so it's hollow on the inside. So you can just kind of dr dr drill through it with something that, you know, cuts through metal. Um, I just painted the edges so it wouldn't rust. And this is the inner piece of a desk grommet. The outer piece didn't fit, but just use that to like cover up the holes. The only, uh, the only wires and stuff that I use are for my grow lights. I did used to have fans in here as well on each level, but I don't know if it was making that much of a difference. And the ceiling is not like airtight or anything. So I feel like there is enough air that gets in. I just, I didn't feel like it was doing enough to really justify it. And it, I don't know, it looks kind of bad and, uh, messy it makes the cable cable management really difficult you can see all of the uh the little like cable things that i have in here i just took out the lights so there's a the extra ones were all for the cables for the fan and just the way that you attach them together like i didn't think it was super like safe in a high humidity environment anyways it's really not what those fans were designed for so yeah i just figured like safer to take it out and i and i had just turned them off before and I didn't really notice a huge difference in how the plants did. So I just figured I'm gonna try it, gonna try it without them. As far as lights, I am using Barina grow lights. Okay, this one is still kind of messy where some, you know, that yellow sticky paper is kind of stuck to it. I have to use some like glue gone to get that off, but I kind of forgot about that. Uh, this is a 24 watt Barina light. Those are about the perfect lights when you have a space like this that's like um a couple feet away from your plant i do i believe have one of the 10 watt lights in here if you can see that so it's a little bit smaller um same brand either uh, Monios or Barina. The 10 watt ones are good if you have like a shelf that was say like here that was closer and you didn't want to burn your plants. I have done that before and I'm but I probably will switch this one out to a 24 watt one. This is kind of just a leftover from when the uh, the shelf was was closer to the plants. So the wires go up from the base and they go up along the edge which I have them secured with these little cable management things whatever they're called goes up to this light and then this light hooks up to that light 
Then that cable comes out. We go back up to the next shelf, which is actually the top one. And then it connects to this one. And then I have another cable going to the last 24 watt grow light. And that is just about the right amount of light for these shelves. The, sh the shelf on the top, because of the angle that the sun comes in, the ones at the top don't get as much light actually as the ones on the bottom. I think you can kind of see that with the way the light is coming in now. There's actually natural light on the bottom, but not at the top. So those guys actually need more supplemental light. And then I actually have a another set of lights so it's a whole separate wire going up on this shelf for my Hoyas. Now these are under counter lights that they used to have at Costco. I'm not sure if they still have them. You can turn them off by touch or just waving your hand under underneath. Um, these are really good because they don't really get hot. And actually these ones I've been able to just stick on using adhesive and I've never had a problem with them falling off. These are really good if you have a tight space. So I used to have the shelf here. So the Hoyas were really close to it and I've never had a problem with burning with these lights. So that's originally why I use these and not the uh, Burino ones because I just did didn't have a lot of space. I was trying to fit as many in as possible and it's uh, it's pretty good. But even at this, even at this kind of level, I did measure and I'm getting about like 300 foot candles. And obviously as the plants grow taller, they'll get even more. For the other lights, um, I have them secured with magnets. There's kind of a stray magnet here stick that there. Um, magnets are the best thing that I found for the Barina lights. So I can kind of just actually should be able to like pop this off. Um, so they come with these clasps. If I move this magnet. They come with these clasps. Now, I had to kind of break the tabs off of the side. I've bought several of these lights from like different brands at different times. And I feel like sometimes the kind of brackets it comes with are magnetic and sometimes they aren't. So I'm not really sure which iteration came with these ones, but they had kind of these wings that I had to just, whoops, had to kind of just snap off. But the nice thing is they are magnetic. The body itself of the light is like not magnetic, but these, these are. So with four of those, that that is plenty. And then I just have, you know, one underneath the glass and one on top of the glass. And that's very secure. I've never had an issue with that setup. Oh, I guess I didn't even mention the um, weather stripping. So I really think it's important to weather strip your greenhouse cabinet to make it like a greenhouse. Otherwise, you might as well just buy a shelf like they don't retain a lot of extra humidity as it is. It might be kind of hard to see, but I have um, this like black weather stripping that's adhesive that I just stuck on the side. This kind of residue, I used to have the clear weather stripping like that I have on the door here, but I just found it didn't look quite as nice. Um, I might replace this one on the door too eventually, but I just have the weather stripping in the gaps on both sides. And then when you close the door, you can kind of see that this gap here is filled. It's not perfect. Um, I might replace the weather stripping with something a bit uh, thicker in the future, but I'm not trying to maintain like 100% humidity in here. I'm more aiming for like maybe 75%. And then this one on the door, you close the other one first and then this one kind of just folds in and it seals the crack in the middle. There are, I guess, still gaps at the top that you could close and at the bottom if you wanted it to be really, really humid but I don't think you need to, to go that far. I, I have the same kind of setup in the Anthurium greenhouse cabinet, except that I also have the weather stripping, the black kind on the door. That one's a little bit harder to close because you have to kind of put them together at once, but it maintains the humidity high enough for my Anthurium. So I think it's uh, doing, doing well enough. And again, if I go on the side here, you can't really, you can't really like see the gap. This door might just be a bit tighter with the way it is put together. So that is how I have it set up. Okay, so in here we have a beautiful multiflora or sorry, fallopia. It's actually a different name. Do I have it? I did not label it. It's like Ray something. I'll put the correct name on the screen, but this is a really cool vining plant. I just recently transitioned this one to 
self-watering and um, the mineral magic mix from Crystal Star Nursery. It wasn't just like soil before, but I think self-watering is a lot better for me, especially for a plant like this. Like if you uh, let it dry out, it will let you know. And as far as I know, I have no idea where you can get these outside of Canada. Um, if you are looking for one in Canada, I can um, link you the at least one shop that I know has them and I can link the um, the person I got them from so you can get your hands on these if you're in Canada but outside of Canada I'm sorry I don't know they're also considered invasive in some places so it may be very possible that in certain parts of the world you just you just can't get one of these but I absolutely am obsessed with this plant it, it's not looking the best because of that transition period but the leaves come in such a beautiful pink color oh look at these like look at those new little leaves the only thing you have to really watch is that it doesn't uh, revert and go all green or all pink but it puts out so many nodes so many different growth points that you really don't have to worry about it like, look at that isn't that so pretty i love that one here is eglonema pictum tricolor i find most aeroids or at least at a lot of a lot of the ones that i like to keep they look better from like the top down so i actually feel like this bottom shelf is nice for me to appreciate them more. I used to have them on the top shelf, but I actually think this is a lot nicer. So this uh, Pictum Tricolor did have thrips for a while. That's what this damage is from, but I think that he has recovered. I really love him now that he's grown these double stems, and you can actually see that he's starting to get a third uh, growth point here, and I think that'll look super cool once it's like a little almost like a little palm tree forest. I know not everyone likes these woody stems, but I actually think it's kind of, it would actually be kind of cool to put them in like a bonsai style pot because I, I really like them. I did think about like bending the stem at one point and I kind of was playing around with it and like half broke it. So I, I did abandon that idea. I feel like this guy is kind of <laughs> stealing the show. I just took a picture of him the other day and it did not do, do him justice, but look at this oblique. That's beautiful. I feel like this could be thumbnail material. He is absolutely gorgeous, has always been one of my favorite plants. I did buy this guy when he was very expensive and they've come down a lot now, but I love him. I The only thing I don't like is the stupid way that he grows. So he got thrips as well. So I cut off all the mature leaves that he had. And then he just did not want to do anything except grow runners. Like you can see all of the runners and I've kind of like stuck one back in the pole. And now he's getting a new leaf there, but I might chop him and try and get more growth at the base because I mean the leaves are pretty but this setup is is not pretty but at least now I have a bit more space to actually put some of these plants on moss poles this is another notorious plant for growing runners this is a midrium medium silver and he is just absolutely stunning but every time he grows runners I just chop the runners off you can probably see the in the pot the stems are kind of crazy I also use like bobby pins and just stick little mushrooms on top that are foam uh, to pin the nodes down into the soil with uh, some success sometimes they don't take but actually quite an easy plant and overall pretty happy with how he has grown I chopped him back Back to nothing so all of this growth is like regrowth and I kind of like how bushy he is now I don't think I'll end up putting him on a pole because I think I'm just gonna let him keep filling out that that pot I'm, I'm happy with the size that he is right now this is platycerium I think will Nikki um, it's a specific uh, specific one I don't have the tag he's gonna get mounted on cork and go on my uh, plant wall thing with my other staghorn ferns but I have not gotten to that quite yet so he is just staying in here temporarily he's so fuzzy i cannot wait to see this guy keep growing this is syngonium aurea not looking the best but he had thrips so i chopped him right down to the base guess i'll do another little like thrips check because i think he's been clean for several weeks but you never know when they might kind of pop back up again and sometimes the thrips are in the unfurling leaves so you don't even realize until the new leaves unfurl and they have some weird damage but I think he's okay actually same situation with this pink princess I this is just from little tissue culture plants that I got at uh, my local nursery once the prices started to come down when when they started to come out in tissue culture again has had thrips um 
but I've just been kind of watching her. Uh, I think it's she hasn't been like the problem plant. Thrips have come from a different plant and she just happened to be there. So I think she's she's kind of recovered. We'll see if she gets more more pink. These are my um, Swirtsky mite cultures. You can watch the video I did on um, how to breed your own predatory mites. I So I keep these guys in with my plants and I just make sure that the cultures are like touching the plants so that they can just like crawl up the pots and make their way onto the plants. You can see there's like a hole in the top of the lid there so that some of them can get out and some of them can stay and breed. And the lids also don't close tight on these so then they can uh, they can get out. Those guys are doing doing good. If I open it up, I might not be able to see anything. This is just pollen. They're small. They are there. This is a uh, varicosum Amazon sunset. If you remember my imports from uh, Equigenera, so it's rooted and everything, um, and it has grown a few leaves, and the leaves are pretty when they come in. But he also keeps getting thrips every time he gets a new leaf. So I keep uh, cutting them off. Hopefully he'll look good at some point in the future. Normally there's a few more in my cabinet, but because of the thrip situation, there are not. Okay, Hoyas. This is honestly, I'm tempted to just have a cabinet full of Hoyas because to be honest, I'm kind of over a lot of aeroids, a lot of philodendron. I'm mostly into uh, into Hoyas. Oh, there is a little um, Monstera adansoni variegated in here. I wanted to, him to have a little bit more light. Was going all white, so I chopped him. He's in a self-watering pot. He almost died, I think because of thrips. Well, maybe not thrips for this one. Maybe this was just because he keeps going all white. I don't know how he's gonna do, but anyways, let's put him down there for now. So, Hoyas. This is Hoya Pandorata, uh, I think. It has some yellowing leaves. Honestly, this is one of the hardest Hoyas in my opinion. It's like not hard once it's established, but then it rots really easily, especially when you're rooting new plants and it, I find like every little change makes it get stressed out and possibly die. Like I put these Hoyas in these cuttings in the substrate in like a high humidity bin. And all I did was move them out of like 100% humidity into this cabinet where it's maybe like 60, 70% humidity. And you can see all the yellowing and some of the stems might be rotten, but I do have some growth coming. And these guys do grow really quickly when they recover, like when they're um, rooted and everything. And I used to have a really big plant and then just all of a sudden it totally just, you know, died all at once. Let me just move him out. Hoyas are really easy to tip over. This is a new one, um, Graffithii Splash. A little bit dehydrated because it's just a fresh cutting, but I find cuttings root pretty well in self-watering pots as long as you have the humidity pretty high. This is Hoya Mini Bell Splash. I used to have a really nice plant of this and it kind of reverted and died. But this cutting is from my mom's plant, which was originally a cutting from my plant. It's funny how they kind of like go back and forth sometimes and has a peduncle as well. Don't know if that will actually survive since this is also just a cutting rooting, kind of like the Graffithii. Take you out as well so you don't pull any of the other Hoyas out. This is Hoya insularis. This is an old cutting that is dying. This is a new cutting that I just have stuck in there. Hopefully the humidity will be high enough in here that it will be able to root. Otherwise I might put it in a bin. This is Hoya Thompsonii splash. So this one has gone back and forth with its level of splashiness and also had root mealybugs for a time so it didn't really grow very much. This is one of the newer leaves I think and it's decently splashy. Could be better but it's, it's pretty good. So I've had this one for a long time, but I kind of just keep chopping it back every time it grows green leaves to hopefully promote more of this splashy, splashy growth. Hoya um, species Lo Loei province. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this Hoya, to be honest. It was kind of growing and then it got um, root mealybugs, which is the same story for a lot of my Hoyas. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm probably going to grow it out a little bit more and then see if I want to keep it. This Hoya, I really love. This was um, 
grown from just a small cutting that I was actually gifted by uh, I Believe in You on Instagram. She knew I was looking for one and I just, this is one of my favorite Hoyas. Pachiclatas are pretty easy and they have beautiful flowers and they have these fuzzy leaves. They're just like so, they're so good. Like, and this is the, the best version in my opinion, the the inner variegated one so so happy about that one you can kind of see um it had flat mites like pretty bad that pocketing is from flat mite damage but i've treated it with horticultural oil and i think it is okay sometimes it takes a little bit for the damage to kind of become apparent though that one is definitely an easy one to knock over so we're going to be careful with it this is hoya <laughs> um polynera silver or broke uh, Brogette. I, oh man, polyneuras are just like the worst for doing well and then all of a sudden dying one day. Um, and I've, I've taken cuttings and sold them and then my mother plant just like declines. I'm not even sure if this new growth is like actually silvery or if I have to cut it back. It can be kind of hard to tell. And this cutting, apparently it's rooted, like if I tug on it, but I don't even know what's happening with that one. So anyways, we're just gonna stick him in the corner and pretend that didn't happen. Hoya Dakia is struggling as always. I'm actually gonna pass this one on to one of my plant friends. Not much to say about it. This is a new Hoya to me. This is um, Hoya Saba, I believe. Focus. It's really cool and fuzzy. I'm just being gentle with it because it's still rooting like some of the other ones. Um, really big leaves, fuzzy has this like uh, red purple vein on the back like Gunungading does. Really, really interesting Hoya. Another Hoya I've been like rehabbing for a long time. This is um, Kalina, I think, Splash. You can see how like the original leaves were splashy, but then the new growth, it's kind of weird because sometimes when the leaves come in, they have nothing, but then you can see that these ones are getting splashiness. So this one might actually be a Hoya where the splashiness is light dependent, which is, it's not usually like that. Anyways, it this one has had really bad mealybugs and root mealybugs, so I'm happy that it's actually growing. This is a new Hoya to me that I'm so happy about. I got this one in a trade. This is Hoya Argentinia Princess. This Hoya was super expensive for a long time. They're a bit more reasonable now. They're basically a Hoya Carnosa um, Crimson Princess, but then all splashy. And oh, I'm just so happy with it. And I'm so happy. They're also notorious for re reverting. So if you can get a top cut because this one has stayed splashy like they often either revert the splashiness or the coloring the variegation revert so and it's kind of hard to see on the new leaves if they're splashy or not but when it's when they're like fully solid silver it can be kind of difficult to see because you don't have like the contrast really love her hoya bertonier variegated haven't really started sun stressing this one yet but i promise she is variegated i killed my original Bretonnier variegated um, but very kindly uh, someone traded me these cuttings and again this is another situation where I'm rooting them right in the self-watering pot and mineral magic medium. I had this in a high humidity bin which is why you have all those crazy aerial roots and I just moved it to the greenhouse cabinet the other day. Hoya Rhyme Splash. Beautiful glossy leaves. Beautiful splash. This one had root mealybugs for a while but I think we're past that now which is amazing. Love this one and they're getting more reasonable so definitely would recommend picking one of those up if you get the chance. This is Hoya Species VL9. Not looking the greatest. Um, uh, I did, so I just recently discovered root mealybugs on this one and the way I've been treating root mealybugs is to do a flush with hot water. So um, if you flush the soil with 120 degree Fahrenheit water so that the, the root ball is maintained at like um, at least 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It is supposed to kill all of the adult mealybugs and the eggs. Um, and I've actually had a lot of success with that, but um, if the water is a bit too hot, it can damage the plants. I'll actually show you this. Uh, Gunangading here. I wasn't watching the temperature and this scarring on the leaf and here the blistering is from essentially burning the, the plant with water that's too hot. But as long as you do watch the temperature and it doesn't get above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, it seems to be okay. It can burn the roots too if you do it too hot, which might also be 
Like this yellowing is probably just because I disturbed this cutting and it wasn't rooted before anyways. So if you then introduce more stress, then you're gonna get <laughs> yellowing. But hopefully this cutting kind of fills out. It's a slow grower. Yeah, hopefully I don't kill her. This is another new one to me, Hoya Lacunosa, inner variegated. Just two, growing from two little cuttings, but they're starting to grow. This one I do find is sensitive to water, so you wanna make sure that the reservoir or whatever is, is filled up. She's really nice. I guess I might as well go back to the good and gadding. I'd like to sun stress her. I'm not really sure. Um, not really sure how to do that without like burning the foliage. I don't really have a great spot set up with like lots and lots of light. She has just been growing so well in the greenhouse cabinet. I just don't really want to take her out, you know, because these guys can also be pretty sensitive, but she's already always done pretty well. Now, top shelf. These are my bigger Hoyas. Around this level, I think they get around like 500 foot candles of light. Um, so a little bit lower when they're shorter, but that's with two uh, grow lights. They don't get light a ton of natural light at the top and I'm actually gonna pull them down so you can see them a bit better. This is Hoya Rang San Splash and just look how beautiful he is and how big the leaves get. Like look at that. This is one that has just absolutely exploded since I put him in a self-watering pot. I had him as just like a small cutting for a while and he wasn't rooting or doing anything in the self-watering pot has just been like so good for him. These guys are high tip risk though so I'm gonna be very careful. This here is Hoya Sistiantha Splash. It's got this vine that's like just going crazy which is why he's in the tall shelf. This is Hoya Michele. Pretty splashy. I've been trying to keep chopping her back to get more splashiness because obviously the original leaf is splashy. So she used to be bigger, but I've I've trimmed her quite a bit recently. This is Hoya Crassi Patiolata Splash. She hasn't been looking too good. You can kind of see how woody those stems are. That's all from flat mite damage. And I think she had root mealybugs as well or some root rot or something. So she hasn't really grown in a while. Um, but I have treated her with horticultural oil and I think she's starting to be on the mend now. You can also see she's starting to get some roots come at the bottom of the reservoir, which is a, a, a good sign that she actually has healthy roots now, not just rotting roots. So that is a good sign. This beautiful, beautiful girl is Hoya Coriacea Silver. This is one of my absolute most favorite Hoyas. The leaves get massive and they are so beautifully silvery. Um, also for a thin leaf Hoya, quite easy to take care of. I've just taken this as a cutting. I find these guys rooting really easy. I've never had a problem and that's the original original plant. Next we have Hoya Silver Dollar. Lots of people say Hoya Silver Dollar grows slowly but honestly I've never really found that to be the case. Mine has always done pretty good. Maybe starting from a cutting they grow slowly but even then I, I feel like my cutting was pretty healthy when I got it and it just has done well ever since. I've had no issues with it. Lovely plant except a little bit more on the uh, minty green side versus silver. I know that's the complaint people have with it. Hoya Wilbur Graves. I show this one quite often. This is the Russian form. Absolutely beautiful splash on this one. Honestly, I, I mean, I can't take credit. It was fairly large when I bought it, but I do not regret it. This is one of my very favorites and I think it always, yeah, always will be. She would be fine not in a greenhouse cabinet because Carnosas are pretty uh, hardy, but usually I keep all my favorites in here. This is Canengiana inner variegated with cool wavy leaves. And last one, Hoya New Guinea Ghost. This one I almost lost, but I managed to reroot it. They do grow very quickly when they are happy. And she's starting to vine, so I'll probably give her a trim at some point just to have some backup at least. Absolutely love her. All right, so I'll put those guys back and then go to greenhouse number two.